Hi guys, thanks for joining us again. So we wanted to do something a little bit extra today. Uh, we had a couple of comments um, about shortcuts when uh, people asking about shortcuts. So what I thought would be quite fun to do today uh, would just be to present to you guys a, a, a number of, uh, of shortcuts that we each use on every session that we can't get away from. E the, the shortcuts that we use in every session uh, and it probably benefit you guys as well. So, so who would like to start on this one? We we're talking about edit shortcuts, right? We're talking editing today, yes. Specifically yeah. editing shortcuts. Um, Dave, and you usually go first. You do one. Yeah, I do, do us I do usually go first, but and Anders, you could go first. Oh, uh, mine kind of latch on to, uh, to, to different stuff, but uh, um, one that I uh, use every session, one editing uh, shortcut, you have to edit that, that out because I show them. Uh, so one editing shortcut that I use every session is uh, the keyboard uh, shortcuts to fade in, fade out, and do crossfades. And those are the D, F, and G keys on your keyboard. Of course, they only work if your A to C button, your keyboard focus is mm -hmm. set to the edit window. Uh, but the D, F, and G, D for fade ins, uh, F for, um, for crossfades like this, and G to do a fade out. I use those all the time. Awesome. Andy? Yeah, so um, I'll share my screen. I guess my first one um, is going to be the control key to a line. Um, so I've got two different clips. I've got this one clip and I've got this other clip. And, and I could go blind, you know, trying to, to drag these to the same place. <laughs> but if I go ahead and click on this clip, which puts my timeline insertion at the beginning of the clip because my timeline and edit selection are linked. Um, and then if I hold down the control key and then click with the grabber on another clip, in this case, the, the bottom one here, if I click that, it will snap the beginning of that clip to the start line or to, to the timeline insertion. Um, there's a couple variations of this. So I'm going to move this over here. Um, again, I've got this top one. I've slowed and my timeline insertion is right here. If I want to snap the end of this, I'm going to hold down. Andy, I think you're cheating a bit. You're doing multiple now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, great. Wind him up. Wind him up, put him down, and just let him go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Andy, go on. So control command. Oh, if you don't want to know. Um, control command and, and, and click is going to align the end of it. And just because I want to annoy Anders, um, I'm going to consolidate this. And I'm going to put a sync point right here. And that is command and comma. And I put a sync point to align with the beginning of this clip over here. And I'm going to hold control just like I did before and shift and it will move that clip so that the sync point aligns. So control aligns the start, command control aligns the end, shift control aligns the sync point. It is three shortcuts technically, but they all fall under <laughs> one I cheated particular too. I did three as well. Category. <laughs> yes, but I'm not going to bring it up because I'm the bigger guy. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, Andy. I love those shortcuts. <laughs> I use them all the time. <laughs> oh, oh, stop it. Okay, my favorite one, and I can't actually share screen because I don't have Melodyne uh, today, but my favorite shortcut um, for, well, say my favorite shortcut, a regular shortcut that I'll use is the star key on the numeric keypad. Um, Andy, do which, it. You, should I share or sh should actually, you? Actually, Dave? yes, yes, if you could do, because that would be marvelous. Okay, I, I'm sharing. Okay, so could, this is my screen. Yeah. That could save I'm me. I'm switching to bar and beats because you're using, using this in a workflow for music, right? Always in a workflow for music for me, mm -hmm. yes. And yeah. if you can open Melodyne up for me. Oh, there it is. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, so this is um, oh, Melodyne. It's always doing that to me. <laughs> okay, now I got uh, Melodyne open. Yeah. Okay, you got Melodyne up. Cool. Okay, so the way that I work with Melodyne is I'll full screen it because I like my blobs to be really big, but I still want to be able to see my counter. 
You still want to be able to see your counter. Still ideally like, want to be able to okay. see my counter. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm working in music sessions a lot, so I'll be working in bars and beats mode. Uh, but mm -hmm. when you're editing in Melodyne it, and, and, and with a screen that size, uh, it's difficult to tell Pro Tools exactly where you want the playhead to start. Right. So what I'll do is, because you, you can't click on the Melodyne timeline and have the playhead move, can you? At least uh, I certainly can't. I can. I can position the the cursor, but doesn't that doesn't position the playhead? But it doesn't That's position right. the playhead. Cool. Mm -hmm. So the way that I get around this is using the star key on the numeric keypad, which allows me to type in specific bar numbers it highlights the uh, the bar number in in the main counter so i can press star and once i've done some editing on bar five for example for 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 a few bars of a phrase i'll listen to it i'm quite happy press stop and then when i want to go on to my next phase i'll have a look or my next phrase rather i'll have a look at what bar i need to start at in melodyne i'll press star and then i'll type that bar so bar 10, for example. Okay, I'll do bar 10. Press enter, and then Pro Tools will press play, and then Pro Tools will start from that particular point. And it's a really really nice way of speeding up Melodyne editing, because you're That's not having to constantly workflow. move the uh, uh, move the Melodyne window around to get to your positional, uh, to, to move your Yeah, and one thing I really around. love about that shortcut is that you don't even have to stop you can just uh, press the star and put in bar 10 and exactly. Protoss will instantly jump to Such that position word, without uh, yeah. restarting. Yeah, that's great. It's a nice okay. one. And, and it's only one shortcut, which I know Anders likes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Stick into the rules, this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great, <laughs> Dave. Uh, one shortcut that I use all of the time is um, if I'm... Um, I, I think, Andy, you should do your first... Well, I was because actually thinking. Is, let let me let me throw over to Dave because he was t he had one about um, uh, uh, edit modes. Yes, yeah. edit modes. Okay, so um, doing because we're talking about editing. So mm -hmm. when I'm working on music stuff, I might constantly be switching between slip and grid mode, um, and rather than move the mouse up here to if you know if I do a little bit there, but we notice that I've got a, a thing. You know, I want to I'm letting you share instead. Sorry, I haven't <laughs> shared. Sorry, um, I uh, uh, I just want to be able to move my cursor to be able to get closer to that transient. Well, I'd have to go up there, click slip mode, and then move my uh, my cursor manually to be able to do that. But I'm constantly flicking between grid and slip mode um, using uh, F4 and F2. So I have to have my my function keys in a Mac functioning as function keys to, to slip between these two, but it just makes editing so much easier when I want to switch between uh, slip mode and grid mode. Just on the fly, I'll use F4 and F2. So I suppose I'm using two shortcuts there, aren't I? Oh, <laughs> oh man! <laughs> you were so close there. <laughs> Rule breaker, this guy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so I, mean, I had I one on top of that. Mm. I've got I've got a a, a workaround. To the, I've got a shortcut that works around that shortcut. Um, so right now you can see my screen. I'm in grid mode, um, and my grid is set to be a. Um, let me get this out of the way. And my my screen my grid is set to be uh, a bar. So as I try to move this clip around, you'll see bump, bump bump it, it it snaps to the nearest uh grid line now if i hold down the uh the command key um and it's command key on a mac and it's control on a windows machine what it does is it puts the clutch on the grid mode and it acts as you to be able to move things as if you were in slip and so I'm holding down command right now, and you can see as I can I can position things, even though I'm still in grid. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as I take off the command key, then I'm back. Whoops. I'm back in my normal one bar grid. So instead of there's two different ways of doing it. You can you can yeah, do yeah. the F keys or or right down there with the command key, and that's just mm -hmm. another way to do it. 
Can I just throw a little uh, addendum onto my shortcut? Um, when you use F4 to switch to grid mode, you have to be careful not to hit it twice because you can end up switching between relative grid mode and absolute grid mode. And if if you end up switching into relative grid mode and do some uh, and move some clips around, you may end up with some slightly odd snapping behaviors. Um, there's some very Sort of specific workflows for using relative grid mode that I won't go into, uh, but if you are just kind of getting used to, to Pro Tools and you're, you you want things to snap specifically to the grid, blue grid mode is the grid mode that you want to work on. And yeah, that's that's a great shortcut, Andy. And, and one side effect on that shortcut, of course, is it also works the opposite way. If you're in slip mode and you want to and you want to enter grid mode without actually going to grid mode, hold the same modifier, the command mm -hmm. key, and then you're temporarily in in uh, grid mode, even though you're actually in slip. So it works in both modes. Mm. So if you're in slip, it turns on grid mode temporarily, and if you're in grid, it turns on uh, slip mode. Uh, so my next uh, shortcut would be this baby here. If uh, I make a selection, I want to keep this and get rid of the part and in the start and in the end of a clip, I press Command T to trim off on both sides. I use that quite a lot. Who's next? I've lost track. <laughs> Andy, you wanted to do the variant. If you, if I only, I can do a variant on that. Um, so so this is um, so so Command T obviously is going to trim to selection. Mm -hmm. um, but if I put the timeline insertion over here. Um, a, the A key, and again, this is all with the uh, command focus uh, enabled over there. So the little A to Z button is, is golden right up here at the top of the tracks window. So A is going to trim the beginning, um, and then uh, S is going to trim the end. Great stuff. Cool. My final one is again one that I use all the time. So you can see at the top on my markers lane that I am quite good at, at marking out my verses, my bridges, and my choruses. And uh, if I open up my memory locations window, we can see that each of these markers has a number. And I can use a shortcut on the, again, on the numerical keypad, um, period, the number of the memory location, and then pressing period again, and my playhead will shift to that particular point. So if I want to move to the first bridge, uh, which is uh, memory location number one, I'll press one period, one period. We can see that my playhead has jumped to the bridge and I can instantly play from there. If I want to jump over to verse two, period, seven period, instantly jumping over to verse three, second chorus, uh, period, nine period can very, very easily jump from different parts of the song uh, just with a very simple shortcut. And I'm resisting the urge to tell you the shortcut for actually programming in markers to the in the first place because I'm trying to <laughs> stick to my one shortcut rule. I, I really like that, Dave. And <laughs> as, as, your, as your other uh, shortcut as well, this can be done in during playback. So you can leave Pro Tools running and yeah. still jump to locations using this shortcut. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. Uh, so my last shortcut is um, is something that I use uh, <laughs> a great deal, and that's to nudge stuff. So basically, up here in the um, in the this area, I have a nudge value, and this usually I have this set to follow the main time scale, and it uh, a value that I can set. Right now, it's set to quarter notes, so I can nudge anything by pressing the plus or minus keys on my numerical keypad mm -hmm. by this nudge value. And uh, I use that a lot. Awesome. Let's put a kibosh on there because we could continue to go on and on and on and on and Completely. on. Completely. So uh, there you go. Hopefully some interesting shortcuts that you can use in each of your sessions. And, you know, shortcuts are great. The more you use them, the more you internalize them, uh, the easier they become and the quicker your workflows becomes one of the reasons Andy, that we, we you had a sugar, sugar cube as a finish show didn't you oh i thought you were going to show it no that's your sugar, sugar cube you do oh, it all right um all right i, I got a sugar cube this is the I one more thing section this is the one more thing uh, so let's see i've got this so this is kind of on top of what uh anders was saying about nudge 
So let's say I've got my clip at exactly the right place. Okay, so it's, it's screen, perfect. It's, okay, so I've got my, my clip exactly where I want it to be. Um, but let's say that I wanted to have this drum loop or whatever it is lay back a little bit. But I want to keep the clip in the same place. So I could nudge, um, you know, like like Anders has, has shown. Um, and let me go in here just really, really zoom in this puppy. There we go. Okay, so I could nudge my what is my nudge value oh one your sample. nudge is one sample <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's start the sugar cube again um so let's go here to bars and beats and let's make it uh that's yeah, 16th note why not um and if i go over here and if i start to pop this you're going to see that it's oh jeez there you go. It's nudging the, it's now laying back, but the clip is off the grid line. And that's not what I want. I want to keep the grid line, but I want to nudge the audio inside the clip, leaving the clip where it is, but I want to nudge the contents of that clip. And so contents begins with a C-O-N-T. The control key also begins with C-O-N-T. So contents control. So hold down the control key, and then the plus or minus keys will nudge the contents, and you can see the, the audio moving inside the clip, but the clip itself is not moving. That's insanely cool. <laughs> it, is, it is super, super cool. <laughs> Did, I, I'm assuming, actually, that that won't work if your clip is a whole audio file. That is correct. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. So, so if if you have a whole file clip, then then this does nothing. Obviously, because there's nothing to no to nudge. For it to go so, through, yeah. so, so I use this a lot um, when. So, for example, let's say I've got a drum loop and I've mm -hmm. selected the drum loop, and I'm going to use Anders' shortcut of Command T, which is going to trim to selection. Well, is that a subset clip? Yes, it is. And mm -hmm. so, will this shortcut work with it? Yes, it will. Fantastic. That is so cool. <laughs> let's leave it there. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't yet done so, please hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get uh, uh, notifications of all the videos and and more, hopefully like this. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to you guys. We'll see you soon. Thank bye. you. Bye.